Alright, here we go. Was that not supposed to hit a target? There's quite a few videos out there about the Wellrod pistol, but not so much about the newer B&T VP9 or the brand new B&T Station 6. But it's appropriate to at least briefly discuss the Wellrod as it is the Station 6's grandfather. The Wellrod was developed during World War II by a British guy with a pretty tantalizing and sexy surname, Major Hugh Reeves. Major Reeves was a member of the Special Operations Executive, a covert British organization specializing in sabotage, espionage, and reconnaissance behind German lines. Sounds like a fun job. To describe it shortly, the Wellrod was a spy assassin's tool, a bolt-action, integrally suppressed pistol. It used a very sophisticated for-the-time suppressor that integrated both traditional metal baffles and wipes, or soft rubber or rubber-like discs that kind of operated like baffles, except the bullets intended to actually pass through the wipes while trapping the following gases to reduce noise. And because it was a bolt-action, with a bolt that had to be manually twisted to be unlocked, and the bolt hand cycled, all of the propellant gases, all the noise was directed downrange into the suppressor and there was no action noise. The well rod was originally developed in 32 caliber, but because popping someone multiple times with a hand cycled action and the accompanying human screaming sent decibel readings through the roof. The design was later changed to the more lethal, more effective 9mm. It was also later adopted by the United States OSS, the predecessor to the CIA, and airdropped behind enemy lines. It was used by spies, resistance fighters. This meant that the well rod had to be sanitary or totally unmarked so plausible deniability could be maintained should the gun be discovered by the enemy. A little theatricality, a little deception, a little like using utility companies or delivery restaurants in place of your side chick's names on your cell phone. It's an odd looking gun and the magazine is kind of the grip. And while that's not the most ideal design choice, purely from like an ergonomic or a pragmatic perspective, it meant that the well rod looked like a bicycle pump or something without the magazine inserted and not so much like a pistol. It's a little bit like bringing that Dunkin' Donuts cup full of booze to work. You know it's booze. You think that everyone else thinks it's booze, but because it doesn't look out of place, no one even imagines that it's a cup half full of king cake vodka and mocha swirl. It's a little like that. Cool as it was, the well rod was more or less retired after the Cold War, even though it saw some sporadic use even in the Gulf War. But the well rod has captured the hearts and the imaginations of countless shooters who want to get their hands on that big black tube of perfect suppressification. Thank God one of those dreamers was probably some Swiss engineer with major pull at B&T who basically modernized and smallened the well rod into what you see here today, the B&T Station 6. It wasn't exactly a fast trip to Super Silence Pistol Town. I remember first seeing the modern well rod as the VP9 back in like 2018 or something. The name VP9 is one of the bigger names for a firearm in history as it stood for Veterinary Pistol 9. The implication being that, yes, its predecessor was used for clandestine assassinations, and you could do that with the VP9, but the VP9 is intended to humanely put animals out of their misery, which is what's going to happen if you keep letting your dog shit in my yard, Fred. I know you watch these videos. I know you're watching this, dude. Don't test me because I've got one of these now and no one will miss Mr. Bojangles except for you. There will be no investigation. But haha, -ha, yeah, VP9, the veterinary pistol, sure. The interesting thing about the VP9 is it had a proprietary magazine similar to the well rod where a large section of the grip was actually part of the magazine. The good news is that it made it easier to conceal and again, made the disassembled VP9 look a little bit more like a random object, not really a gun. But the bad news is proprietary magazine that was going to be pretty chunky and you know it was probably gonna be very expensive too. 
Apparently, for some reason, the ATF was not okay with this modification for import, that is, the magazine being a part of the grip. I'm sure it wasn't because it was too sinister. It's probably because it didn't meet like some bullshit technical requirement of 922 or something like that. But for whatever reason, they had to switch to conventional magazines. Accordingly, I saw the newer version, the Station 6, this one right here, at GunFest 2021 for the first time, and I got to shoot it for the first time at B&T's U.S. headquarters in Tampa, Florida, a.k.a. the Switzerland of America. We shot it at an indoor range, and even being indoors, the performance was pretty incredible. I made sure to put my order in to get one as soon as humanly possible, and here we are now, over a year later, and finally, I have mine. As mentioned, the VP9 and the Well Rod used proprietary magazines, but the Station 6 uses much easier to find 9 round 9mm 1911 magazines. That means that the Station 6 still has a full size grip whether it's loaded or not, so it's not necessarily as clandestine as the Well Rod. But the good news is that there's a larger groove you can see here in the grip at an area where, if you're brave enough to hack up your $2,300 Swiss pistol, you can cut that portion of the grip off and attach it to the magazine base plate as you see fit, or even maybe explore 3D printed options if you absolutely have to have the most covert concealable possible package. Also, like the Well Rod, which was, again, a much larger pistol and used conventional baffles along with wipes, the Station 6 uses one of two suppressors custom built for it. You can either go with the Real Deal Station 6 suppressor, which I have here. It uses those rubber-like wipes that I talked about with no conventional baffles. This means you get the maximum possible suppression in the smallest possible footprint. The bad news is performance degradation shooting through those wipes begins to occur at around 10 rounds. And I think after about a box, we had pretty much completely blown through the wipes and there was really no suppression. If that bothers you, I guess you're kind of missing the overall point of this pistol, which is meant to be like a one and done quiet as possible deal, but you can also just get what B&T calls the training suppressor, which is the same suppressor as this one, just with conventional baffles. It's not going to be as quiet, but it's going to need far less service than this full wipe can. Another major difference between the Well Rod and the VP9 and the Station 6 is that the Station 6 is indeed threaded half by 28, meaning that you can use any half by 28 threaded 9mm suppressor or almost any on here if you please. It takes away from the overall aesthetic and the point of the gun, but it's still nice to have the option if you just want to kind of screw around on the range without blowing through a bunch of wipes. Right now, I've got the wipe can only, but I probably will end up buying the trainer suppressor because B&T's engineers are ADHD as F, and they're probably going to discontinue this gun in like three years, like they do with almost everything else that's cool that they make, and the price of the gun and all the accessories going to go through the effing roof, so I may as well just stop being a bitch and just buy it now, and I would suggest you guys do the same thing, because with B&T, who knows? Speaking of suppressors, and this is the part that you guys want to hear, pun, but how is the suppressed performance of the Station 6? Isn't that silly? In a word, incredible. While I didn't meter the suppressor myself because I don't have a $15,000 proper decibel meter. Do you hear that? Subjectively, it sounded like the quietest centerfire handgun I have ever shot. A brief note about that, and I say this frequently, but please, please don't base your decision on whether or not to buy a quality suppressor on decibel readings or what you find on the internet or white paper performance. Decibel meter readings are just too unreliable based on too many factors like ammo brand, humidity, temperature, where the suppressor was in relation to the decibel meter, maybe even the shooter's gender election, etc. But for me, actually hearing it for myself as a shooter and a bystander is far, far more important. Sick. To show you how messed up it is, I did a search for decibel level readings for the Station 6, and the results I found were everywhere between 120, very quiet, 
and 129 decibels. Not that quiet. Quite a big swing. As someone who's fired dozens of suppressed 9mm, my subjective interpretation is that this gun, the Station 6, is probably the quietest suppressed 9 out there. Myself and Ryan went to the outdoor range with my friends, Jock, an Army Ranger, and Joey, a Plaquemines Parish deputy. All of us were absolutely astounded by the sound performance. To us, it seemed like the impact of the round on the berm was actually louder than firing it. One of the main reasons for this is because this Station 6 is, again, a bolt-action gun. It sends all of the gas expelled from firing down the suppressor, downrange. You can almost hear the sound of success when you fire in a fresh set of wipes, and then you unlock the bolt. When the wipes are new, it's almost like the gun's airtight because you'll hear air hiss into the action, or sometimes even like a high-pitched squeaking noise, a little bit like an airlock being opened in a sci-fi movie. It's really cool. That's so funny. And perhaps more importantly, there's no action noise. Think about it. Take your favorite handgun into a quiet room, rack it as quickly and as firmly as possible, and tell me it doesn't scare the cat or piss off your wife. That's a pretty loud sound by itself before you even add a gunshot. The Station 6 has no action noise because there's no automatic action. The white can's incredible using a handful of plastic-like coins that have little X's cut out of them. As I mentioned, they do have a limited lifespan, and for us, it was about a box of ammo. After that, we were getting no suppression. Since we're talking about ammo, bear in mind you have to use subsonic ammo through this gun. 147 grain or higher will do just fine. We used Federal Syntec 150 grain. Many of you know that's my absolute favorite subsonic ammo because it has a polymer jacket and a lead-free primer, so it's cleaner to shoot than most conventional ammo. Quick note, the fastest way we found to cycle this thing is take your shot, open palm on the bolt, twist, pull, and then you should have it sideways at that point. So the casing, because as you can see, the ejection port here is at the top, you have to twist it sideways about 90 degrees or more to let that round out. Then same thing in reverse, palm, twist, and you're back on. So to conclude, is the Station 6 worth 2300 bucks? Pretty spendy for a single stack 9 bolt action, huh? This is purely a well, is it worth it to you question. And for me, the answer is effing absolutely. This is a one-of-a-kind pistol that will probably not mint more than a few thousand copies at most, but I'm just speculating. So it's probably going to go up in value anyways. Great gun for a collector to buy and stuff in the safe, or if you're like me and you shoot everything that you own, this one-of-a-kind shooting experience at the range makes it absolutely worthwhile. I also neglected to mention that the trigger is actually really good. Between four and a half and five pounds, clean, crisp, like Lake Lucerne. And you know it's got that B&T Swiss construction made by Swiss elves and the Swiss gun tree. Fit and finish is absolutely flawless. You pick this thing up and it's like holding a, a baby made out of Rolexes. As you all know, if you've been watching the channel for a while, I do like to discuss negatives, even if it's an overwhelmingly positive review, as it is with this gun. Of course, we talked about the price. 2300 bucks for a bolt-action pistol is pricey, but I think you know what you're getting. The only real negative that I have, the grip safety is a little finicky, and you need to be firmly on this grip safety if you want to get anything done with this gun. There were times where we would go to shoot, and we'd have guys... Uh, they dip, they dip, and they'd say, ah, you know, what's wrong? What's wrong? Well, they weren't Maybe firmly before. gripping that grip safety, which is what you need to do. And that's really the only negative that I kind of perceive. So, yeah, I mean, I think this thing's fun as hell. Yeah, I think it's a good investment. Yeah, and remember, Fred, there are even some pragmatic applications for this gun as well. Not to mention it's instant range street cred. If you want to be the coolest guy at the range, just produce one of these and both men and beautiful women will immediately surround you. Okay, mostly men. All right, only men and, and most of them. Probably grizzly bears only, but this is still a really cool gun, okay? Guys, thanks a ton as usual for watching. Thank you to our Subscribestar supporters for watching. 
by this time, hopefully we have a Utreon account set up. As of today, as we sit here, I'm filming this video on March 11. We actually got banned from Patreon uh, for giving away guns. So uh, fuck those guys, I guess. We're only on Subscribestar now, and we are moving over to Utreon, Utreon or whatever. We're following Ian McCollum from Forgotten Weapons over there. Uh, we got a very nice message from the CEO today, very supportive of us. So if you want to support us, notice I didn't plug some horseshit video game for 30 seconds, right, in the middle of this video. That's because I don't like doing it. I don't take money for positive reviews. We're independent because of you guys supporting us on Subscribestar and hopefully by now, Utreon, Utreon, whatever. Anyways, I'm just glad you're watching, guys. Take care. <laughs>